One second. Uh, just go ahead, Todd, and put uh, just a little bit of uh, lower uh, on a palm a little bit. Um, go ahead, on a palm. Sorry. All right. Go ahead, on a palm. Todd Varland, and I'm going to do a little double duty here. We're going to see if we can get the... Uh, I can start off if you want. Yeah, why don't you go ahead while I... Uh, hey, guys. See if I can get this it's Trevor here. Hikes. Um, I originally was here for the free food, uh, but now it looks like uh, I got some duties to do, uh, but I really like the space here. Uh, it's developing. You can see we have hanging mics now, but apparently... We're now connected to 60F81DCC78F2. Oh, there oh, we there go. go. All Michael right. F. Alexa is, is kicking in. Uh, Anupam, can can you say something? Yeah, hello everyone. Oh, there you go. Okay. Awesome. All right, good. All right, fix that AV issue. All right, Trevor, you're good. Yeah, yeah, good. So Todd, take it away. Yeah, so uh, Todd Varland, uh, Solution Architecture Manager here in San Francisco. We're we're streaming live from the uh, AWS Makerspace uh, here at our our downtown Financial District uh, San Francisco office, and. Um, a lot of times we get questions about what is a solution architect and, and in real simple terms we work with customers to translate business and technical uh, needs into um, paths and architectures that work on AWS. So we really kind of help uh, customers you know, get onto the AWS cloud. Uh, super glad to be here and we've got a special guest today that we're, we're really excited about. So anyway. It's Hello. not. It's not the monkey. It's not the puppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Yep. One uh, one logistical issue which we had in this episode was uh, uh, I had to travel and uh, I'm not in San Francisco office, so this is an experiment again. We are trying how does a remote audience uh, work on our streaming show, and hopefully, if it works fine, we can have a lot of uh, other experts uh, from all over the world join our show, uh, and uh, definitely your your uh, recommendations and your ideas will help us there. Cool. Fantastic. So, 
Let's let's start with the demo of the robot. I'm pretty sure uh, some of you who have been following us already know about our robot, but today we wanted to show you how does it work again for people who have just joined. Uh, so um, let's let's give it a try. Uh, it, uh, Trevor, is my screen being shown? Uh, it would be on Todd's computer. So right now we are yeah we are streaming on a on a desktop yeah, remotely. We, yeah, we see your your uh, terminal window on a palm. Sure. So um, this is a leap motion which I have here, and it's connected to my Mac via a cable. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to my terminal, and I'm going to run a command, which is node publisher.js. So publisher.js is a file which I have written. And today we will write the uh, same file ourselves together. And I'm going to run this for now. When I run this, it says optimized for desktop. And when I'm moving my hand, there's a bunch of data which you can see. Some numbers for now. You can think of them as numbers. But they are, uh, they are think of that as a structured JSON which has x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis of, of my hand movements. So this is the subscribe uh, publisher piece. So it's what publisher is doing is it's reading the data from my leap motion based on how high my hand is, how, how close it is. It knows about uh, x, y, and z. And it's sending that data into AWS Cloud. So, what, now, so on, on a palm, uh, where in AWS Cloud? Yeah, so this is currently sending to US East 1, which is our Virginia region. And uh, I'll, I'll show you. You can change it very easily. You can send it to wherever you want. We just chose that region because uh, uh, that was uh, for demo. Uh, something, something for demo, yeah. So, so let, let me show you my browser. I'm just going into my console quickly. And I'm going to show you how does this data look into AWS IoT. So I just uh, logged in. I'm uh, navigating to AWS IoT service. When I do that, I'll go to the test section, where, which means I want to test what is happening in my uh, devices which I have. I'm putting a pound here, which means I want to subscribe to all the messages. I'll say subscribe to topic and click on this. When I click on this, uh, you can see the same messages are showing up here. So this is my terminal, and you can see below my browser, uh, the messages which are being sent, they are appearing in the AWS console here. So, so as you can see, the data has been captured from the lead motion on my, much, uh, on, connected to my uh, laptop. And this data, once captured, has reached AWS Cloud. Now, Todd is going to show you what happens when it, once it reaches to the AWS Cloud. Yep. So let me uh, switch over um, to my terminal. And so, um, so Anupam is in Canada. And he's got his laptop in his leap motion. And he's publishing data into the into the AWS Virginia region. Yeah. So the data is going from what city are you in in, in Canada? Undisclosed. Undisclosed location. Bunker <laughs> location somewhere in Canada. So are you coast. are you east or west Canada? I'm on the east coast. Okay. okay. So uh, east coast of Canada into U.S. Virginia, and then um, then here in San Francisco we have a Raspberry Pi that is subscribing to the same effectively AWS IoT endpoint in Virginia and subscribing to that data. So we're pulling in that data across the US and reading it back. Very so cool. on my uh, terminal here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this, this subscriber program that has a kind of a funky name that Anupam made, but it's a, it's a Python script and I'm gonna start it. And from there, then if I switch back to here, then we can see on a palm is going to move his hand, and then we're going to put one of these plush toys. All right, so uh, the chat, uh, I guess folks on Twitch, what do you guys recommend? Uh, should, should you put in the camera over here? Oh, uh, do you want to do the dog or the monkey? And let's see, uh, let's see what chat has to say. Uh, we have one vote for dog from FOS All MC. Right, dog it is. All right. First, first, first vote. <laughs> right. I guess it was first come first serve. <laughs> We're gonna keep this roll in here. <laughs> so, so as you can see, when I'm moving my hand, if I take it down, uh, let me show you uh, the leap motion here as well. It's sitting on my table. 
and I'm bringing my hand down, it comes down, I bring it up. Alpam, if you get up. this, I'll get you lunch. Oh, wow, okay, let me try. <laughs> it's gotta be your first try. Okay, yep, let's do it. Ah, uh, uh, you gotta pick it up. Oh, oh <laughs> nice. <laughs> As, as you can see, I have my palm closed, and uh, I got a free lunch sponsored by Trevor. <laughs> so, so as you can see, this data is going from my leap motion to this cloud from Canada to Virginia, and Todd's uh, Raspberry Pi has subscribed from Virginia, uh, into, uh, from San Francisco. So, so this, as you can see, these packets are going across the uh, east coast to west coast. And uh, I think latencies are not bad, at least uh, let me open my palm and it drops. Yep. Nice. So uh, Pretty this, good. Is, this is the robot which we are building together here. Uh, so, so far in episode one and two, we have covered some of the parts which go into it, some of the, uh, the things which, uh, which are important to know. So you can watch those videos on YouTube if you have not followed our episode one and two. Uh, we'll also share links at the end of this episode. Uh, but. Um, uh, we we are going into some of the code today. So we, so now that we have a leap motion here, how do we capture data from leap motion into uh, into the Mac laptop? And once we have it in the Mac laptop or or any other laptop, how do we send it to AWS Cloud? So those are the two pieces we're gonna uh, check on today. Yeah, and are on a palm, I just I just want to mention that. So in this example, the sensor is the leap motion connected to a laptop. But this could be just as easily a sound sensor on a very small processor. It could be a temperature sensor. It could be a moisture sensor. And we're going to talk about later. It could be. It could a, be. It could be the headset that the um, that Martin brought last episode. Yeah, it could be the VR he headset. He can do it from Canada. Yeah. Yep. It could be um, RPMs. It could be temperature. It could be engine speed. engine speed. So we're going to talk about that in in a in a few minutes. Uh, about a uh, pretty cool motorcycle project that we did. So, yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that 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 this is just an example of, of one sensor type. So go ahead, Anupam. Sure. Uh, are there any questions, Trevor? Uh, right now, where do I get that robot arm from Paul Cutsinger? Yeah, so I'll, this is Todd, I'll answer that. So um, this particular arm that we're demoing is uh, was built by our friends at, at Robotis for us, um, and so. Um, we can show the yeah. uh, logo, but yeah, yeah Robotis. Right. So Robotis, R-O-B-O-T-I-S dot com. And um, I don't think that they've open sourced that, but our, our other arms that we have, uh, like this one, which is, is a little bit um, less expensive, but uh, operates effectively the same way. Uh, this is open sourced on GitHub. We'll put it on the learn more links um, in the show notes. So, well, so this is so you could build one of these yourselves. The the good news is about the one I just showed. It's only a, it's a sub five hundred for the for the whole kit. The uh, the one that Anapalm is demoing today is about fifteen hundred. Yeah, we in. we go to pretty good details in the in the first episode, and I think we talk about the resources. We talk about how you did it on the three D printer. Yeah, uh, went through some pretty yep. cool stuff. So you yeah. can binge watch first uh, two episodes <laughs> and and catch you up. So, Anupam, you want to go ahead and, and take us into the code? Sure, yeah. So, um, yeah, and uh, definitely search for AWS Maker Studio uh, either on your favorite search engine or YouTube. Uh, you'll find some videos by us. Um, now, now, let's jump into the code of Leap Motion. I think last episode we already talked about how Leap Motion works, what are the kind of capabilities it has. Uh, for example, as you can see, if I turn on the visualizer, it can track my hand. It's showing me how my hand is moving. Uh, I think we went into a lot of depth in last episode here. So if you were interested in what kind of tracking it does, uh, definitely watch episode two. But today we're going to talk about and learn how to build a system once we have this data. So how do we capture this data? So so first, uh, let me start a new program. So first, uh, I have my favorite editor is this, uh, Atom. I'll open a new window here. Okay, welcome guide. Let's close this. And uh, let's let's start a new program here. So so the first thing we need to do here is uh, starting with leap motion. So let me uh, close a lot of distractions which I have here. 
Um, I'll start with DeepJS. And while I'm typing and doing things, feel free to ask questions, and uh, Trevor will interrupt me whenever uh, a question pops up. Uh, the whole intent here is uh, so people know what to do here. So, so LeapJS is the library which LeapMotion provides for JavaScript-related uh, commands. So you can think of it as a SDK, which is a Node.js SDK or, or a JavaScript SDK. So it, it can be used in browsers and other things. So I just went into LeapJS um, SDK, and then if I browse their GitHub repository, they have a simple uh, program to tell how to use it. So, so the simple program is leap.loop. Um, it takes a frame. Let me increase the font size here. Uh, it takes a frame, and it uh, it is logging the hands which are being seen in the frame. So let's start with this program. I think it's a pretty simple. It gives us a good head start. So first, uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to my favorite editor again. Um, first thing I need to do is we, I just pasted the, the snippet which I copied from there. But this program doesn't know about leap yet, so we need to tell it what leap means. So, so the way to uh, it create uh, variables in JavaScript is a thing called var, and I'll call it leap, equal to require leap.js. So leap.js is the JavaScript library which uh, does this, uh, uh, which, which we just looked at. So, so let's save this piece. Uh, and see what it does. So what I'll do is I'll go to my home folder. I'll probably create a new folder. Let's call it Maker Studio. Uh, let's see, EP3. Let's, I created that. I'll go inside it. And I'll save this file as, let's say, uh, publisher. Let's call it uh, pub.js. So kept a uh, very simple name for it. It's in Maker Studio episode three. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very simple. We just copied a snippet which says it will log how many hands a leap motion is seeing right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to run this. So I stopped my publisher, which was running earlier. And uh, I'll, I'll change the window size here so people can see what I'm doing. OK. I'll navigate to the, to the folder which I just created. I think it was Maker Studio EP3. Uh, we have just one pub.js file here. Uh, given that it's a Node.js uh, program, we need to create a new Node project here. I talked about this in last episode, but for those uh, who want more details, I think it's good to check it out. But, but the simple step here is whenever you create a new project, you have to say npm init, which initializes a new Node project in the current di uh, directory. So it's saying what should be the name of the project, Maker Studio. Sorry, maker uh, name cannot be a uh, capital letter letter, so I'll call it small maker studio. No, not a problem. It just a, just a recap on some of the folks that are jumping in. What are you doing exactly? Sure. So so what we are doing right now is we are creating a program uh, using Node.js, which can capture the data which Leap Motion is uh, seeing. So Leap Motion can see what my hand is doing, and we are writing a program which can give us. How high is how high is my hand? How uh, what are the which direction is it pointing? Is it closed or open? So Leap Motion has all that data available in their own uh, system, but how do we take it in a program so that we can send it to uh, AWS IoT SDK or AWS IoT service? So I'm writing the program which is grabbing this data from Leap Motion, which is connected to my laptop. Cool. Cool. So, so now that we have created a project here, let's look. So, so when we initialize the project, you'll see there's a new file which which is package.json, which shows up. Which means uh, if you quickly want to look into it, uh, it just has the name of the project and version and some uh, some other things which we have not filled. Um, now, once we have this, one of the things we are importing here is leap.js. So, so this this folder has no idea what leap.js is. So, we need to import that. So for Node, uh, the package manager is called NPM, Node Package Manager. It's a utility which can find uh, and install the packages from uh, a lot of available sources. So I'll say NPM install leap.js. Uh, what this piece will do, do is it will download the leap.js library, and it will, uh, it will copy it in my current directory uh, under a Node modules folder. So, so let it finish. 
Okay, awesome. So it has done a bunch of activity here. Let's see what happened after it. So it has created a folder named node underscore modules, and node underscore modules has a bunch of other libraries. So if we quickly go there, node underscore modules, it's, it's just good to know uh, that it has libjs inside it, and there are a lot of dependencies which uh, libjs uses, so it has downloaded them as well. So it's pretty good. I think we should be all set for now. And now, now we should run the program, the, the four-line program which we just wrote. Let's run it and see what it does. So I say node. Uh, Palm, if it uh, uh, if just uh, if it doesn't run, we can just bring in our guest here in a minute, and uh, we yeah. can show off the cool stuff that our guest is coming in here for. Yeah. Sure. So node pub.js. So it's showing zero. Now it's showing one. Uh, so I don't know if you can see my camera right now, but if my uh, hand is here, it's one. I have two hands here. It shows two. I remove them. It shows zero. So as you can see, it's showing like uh, how many hands this program is seeing, this leap motion is seeing. So it's a, it's a simple uh, validation that at least our program is working so far. It's telling us how many hands our program can see right now. And how many hands, now, how many hands have you tested? Like how many hands can it support? <laughs> That's interesting. So I, I have seen the four hands so far. Uh, last time when Martin was here on our episode two, uh, he was showing off his hands and I also put, uh, started putting my hands and it's, it was tracking four hands simultaneously. I haven't tried more than that, but I don't know the limit. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. Right. So, so let's let's take it to next level now. Now we know this program works and it can track hands. Now, what do we do next? So, once we have hands, I think it's uh, it's good for us to know how do we track the direction of the hand, like which side is is it pointing? Is it pointing to left, right? Uh, if it is left, by how many degrees? Uh, how high it is uh, above the leap motion? Uh, is it closed and open? So there are different API calls which we can do here. So let's start with something simple. So I'll say if uh, if uh, the frame, the hands which are being tracked by this program, if they are greater than zero, which means somebody is really using this uh, this system, if it is less than zero, I think it doesn't matter because it seems uh, like the system is already idle. But if it is greater than zero, then we should do some interesting things. Let's 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 see what this frame has. So if we, if we log this frame, it has a lot of data. I think it's too much to uh, see. Uh, I can just quickly log it just to uh, see. I'll, I'll run this program here again, and uh, just to show what the frame looks like. If you can see, it is a pretty big JSON object, which has things like uh, which version of Node it is running, is it right, left, a lot of objects, actually, which are not getting printed here. Uh, but I think these are all interesting things. But we don't need to, uh, all these variables. So let's see what is most uh, effective for us right now. What what is needed? So to understand what is needed, uh, I think a good way to start with that is uh, uh, search at leap motion documentation. So I'll show you how to go there. I'll just go to Google and search for uh, leap motion. Uh, I think uh, it goes, takes me to their website. I could have typed leapmotion.com as well. Uh, yeah, if I go to developers, that's where they have a lot of things which uh, developers should be aware of and uh, need to use. So I'm there. Once I'm there, they have a doc section, which is documentation. So I'll go there. And documentation, they have a lot of documentation, like things like uh, C++, C Sharp, Unity, a lot of options. So for now, we are using JavaScript because this is what we have been using here but you can use any other language you want. So, and, and they have two types of systems. One is called Orion, which is the latest one, which works with a lot of uh, new hardware uh, Leap Motion has. And V2 is the one which we have been using. It's the desktop-based utility which we have been using. Any, uh, that any, particular, reason, any particular reason why you chose that one? Uh, why, why we chose this hardware? Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, this, this hardware cost about uh, Sixty, seventy dollars. Uh, I think it uh, varies a little bit. Ten dollars here and there, uh, but uh, this is pretty cheap to obtain. And this was the only hardware uh, we had uh, when we were working on it. Then we saw there were more hardwares, and uh, the we can definitely use more hardware. I think there are more advanced things which can uh, do things where you can wear something on your hand and it can detect things without uh, restricting yourself to a specific uh, leap. Uh, but this is something which we found uh, very easy to obtain, very cheap, and uh, easy to start with. Cool, great. So on a palm, let's let's um let's roll through um the code example that you were um, wanting to show about capturing and publishing, 
And then uh, then let's bring on uh, Dave from Fictive. Sure, yeah. So I quickly wanted to show what does the hand look like. I think it's good to know. Uh, so I, I clicked on hand. If you look at uh, look on this documentation page, there's a specific page dedicated to hands. And uh, uh, so we can track a lot of things. We can track the direction of the hand. We can track how what is the grab strength, which means how tight uh, the, uh, the palm is. Like, is it closed or not? Uh, there are things like, uh, yeah, what is the pitch? Uh, how, how up uh, the hand is? Yeah, I think a lot of these can be captured. So let me quickly put them into a good use right now. So I'll switch back to my program. Uh, I'll add more things here. So I think we don't need to worry about frame. We already know it has a lot of data. Now, now let's log uh, some more information here. So what I'll do is I'll log, uh, first, first let's start with the direction, which means X or Y. So I say frame dot direction. Uh, if you can click on direction here, it tells us it's a vector which has X, Y, and Z. Uh, and it tells you the direction in which the palm is pointed, palm fingers are pointed. So, so in this vector, we need only the first variable. So I'll say, uh, which is X. So I'll go here, uh, back to the my program. And I'll say, I need only the zeroth element from here. I'll go to the, let's, let's, this, so this is our X. Uh, now, what we can do is we can put it in a variable called x value. Let's call it x value equal to this. Similarly, we can create a y value. Uh, so y, I think if we go back to that, uh, there, there's another one for y. Uh, I think uh, what we have been using so far is called palm position. Uh, let's quickly search for that. Uh, palm position is here. Uh, and palm position is very similar to the one which we just saw, but it, it is y, y coordinate. So we'll, we'll have to grab the uh, coordinate number one here. And similarly, z well, uh, z is like how, um, how much my hand is moving forward versus backward. So for this, we have been using a thing called pitch. I'll, I'll not, uh, in interest of time, I'll not go back to that. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're curious, I would highly advise you to look into the uh, the page which I was showing, showing uh, it has very good documentation of um, how the how the leap what are the variables which you have available. So I'll say hand position. I'll say frame dot uh, grab strength. And and uh, Anupam, so we can share this stuff. A lot of this stuff available that people can uh, research. I know we're uh, we're coming up short on time here. Uh, for the sake of uh, I guess time, we can just we can move forward. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I think. Uh, I'll just uh, tell these are the four variables we have captured. I can just create a JSON object here, which will have all of them. And once we have them, we can just push into AWS IoT. So, so I'll, I'll resume uh, once uh, we have the guest speak, and we'll complete this program then. Great. Awesome. Thank, thanks, Anupam. So, um, so Dave, you want to come join yeah, us? Let's do it. Awesome. What's up, world? <laughs> <laughs> So, Dave, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, always love coming here. This makerspace gets better and better <laughs> every time. There's like new toys every time I come, and it's uh, great. So, uh, I'm Dave Evans. Uh, I'm one of the founders and CEO of a company called Fictive. Uh, we're a manufacturing company. Uh, we help uh, small and large companies like your size build physical products every day. So, we do 3D printing, machining, injection molding. We help build early stage prototypes all the way to mass production. So, Do you, uh, do you have a, a, a resin 3D printer? Uh, we do, we have a resin 3D printer, we have FDM, we have SLS. If we if there is a material you want, we make it wow. uh, for uh, you. Challenge so accepted. All challenge right. accepted, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's go. Yeah, so I, I actually know how it works because I, I used it and it was really awesome. But maybe if you could just briefly describe, yeah. like if somebody, let's, we're gonna talk in a future episode about how to create, you know, CAD files yep. and what that process looks like. So stay tuned for awesome special guests in yeah. the future. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that part of the process. But let's say someone's created a CAD file. Yep. Then what is it that they do to then take advantage of, of the services service that you stuff. guys yep. offer? Yep. So for people that don't know, CAD files are 3D model. You're going to build that in a bunch of different types of software. And after that, in my done, example, I used 
uh, Autodesk Tinkercad. Yeah, super so simple. You can use Tinkercad, Fusion 360, Onshape, SolidWorks. These are all things that are out there available to you. A lot of the software engineers out there love using OpenSCAD. It's programmatic, so you can build uh, three-dimensional objects in a, in a CL. Uh, which is pretty awesome. But so after you have this uh, 3D model in here, mm -hmm. what you do is you give, uh, you go to Fictive.com, you can take your CAD model, upload it to our website, and you're gonna get instant pricing across all these different materials. So from cheap plastics to resin printing, metals and print uh, and CNC machine parts, you get all that instantaneously. Yeah. And the, the core benefit of the service is that we deliver those things in 24 hours. Yeah. Wow. So you literally will have this thing in lightning speed and Amazon speed, if you will, delivered to your desk next day. And so our hope is we really wanna help engineers lower those barriers to building physical products. Yeah, and I, it was pretty awesome because I, I did exactly that. I created a CAD file, uploaded it, yeah. and then I think you guys are even nice enough to courier the, <laughs> the, the, the printed Bike object. Bike messenger, hipster over, uh, delivered <laughs> in San Francisco. Yeah, so Bike also being 3D printed. Yeah, oh, yeah and mustache <laughs> on them and all. Yeah. So, you know, we, we so, got to keep it yeah. real in San Francisco. Now, yeah. does it tell you uh, which material to use uh, versus just choosing one? Yeah, so you can actually, it'll give you a whole selection. We have a great guide uh, that's uh, our hardware guide to help you select resins, help you select the materials that you want to do. Um, and so for us, we, we've created this awesome service which allows you to order these 3D printed parts in 24 hours. But what good is a tool if you don't know how to use it, if there's no API, no documentation? So we create a lot of content as well around how to choose the right material and uncovering those, those truths uh, for you. So actually what I'm really proud of here that we'll, we'll show is our first book that we've ever published. Uh, we got got one over there, yeah. uh, and this is a book on teardowns. And so we do this every Friday over beers. Maybe we'll do it one day here on this show uh, with the uh, SBS. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we we could do it. But but basically, what this is is it's a teardown book of all these products where we rip them apart, we reverse engineer them, yeah. and then we tell people how they're made. So this is the the Apple Watch. We had the Sphero BB-8, if you guys remember that guy. Todd, do you uh, want to like, show up on the camera and see what the, what the pages look like? And yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll show while you talk. Yeah, so, so, uh, so basically the, the idea is that every product that's ever made, there's uncovered little truths in it. So there's a BB-8. Yeah, so there's a BB-8, like how does that head f literally yeah. float on this rolling ball? What does the, the magnet mechanism look like? All of these things, we uncover those truths to really help people build better products eventually. Yeah. So really if I was like, hey, this is how Sphero uses a magnet to, to float ahead, how would you then maybe incorporate that into the robotic arm that you're building? How would you maybe make the levitating beer, you know, simple service, uh, flow better better yeah. beverages? Yeah. And so to kind of put this in, in context, so we've got, of course, the AWS IoT service yep. to, you know, to, to, to provide that kind of cloud connected portion, the software, the communication, the security, et cetera. And then these single board computers for you know to run your your code. Yep. And then what you guys offer is the ability to then you know create an enclosure and all the mechanical aspects exactly. of that, so you can basically bring it together in a in an in an AWS yeah. cloud like experience. Because right? some, something that we noticed is that if you're going to build a physical product. It's not just software, it's not just electrical, it's not just mechanical. You need all these different aspects to make an IoT device. And so when we were chatting a lot, it's like how do you inspire people for how to make these physical things? You have your board like an Edison, you know, we talked about these different developer boards. We have systems like AWS's IoT platform to be able to write the software. And then with Fictive, we can help you build the physical 3D printed parts. So, you know, like we were talking about the robotic arm earlier, we would produce all of those parts for you to, to assemble it all So let's together. talk about one of the projects we, do we did together last year. Because so, we are crazy a yeah, little bit. So, you know? so last year uh, we worked together yep. uh, for our reInvent conference and did this uh, fictive open source motorcycle. Yep, so do you want to- Fosmic. Fosmic. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you want to tell a little bit about what the, like, what does this mean and, yeah. and what is it we did here? Yeah, and, and why Fosmic? Yeah, yeah, totally. So we have this crazy idea. It's September. We're all sitting around uh, drinking a beer. And there's this really hard thing which people always struggle with, with what is IoT? like, and, and Or what is the cloud? How does all the data go up there? And one of the ideas we, we came through was, well, 
what if we could show the most badass example of what this would look like? And so we're like, well, what if we built a motorcycle? I'm like, yeah, that, that's pretty cool, but I'm only doing it if we open source it. And so what we built here was a open source motorcycle that's based upon a Ducati engine. Jeez. Uh, all the components you can download for free and all of these things. And then the cool part is it's all bolt together. So there's no welding. You don't have to know how to weld. If you can wrench something, you can you can build uh, build this bike. And then what we did is we hooked up uh, an Intel Edison board to this, and we took all the data off the bike and we beamed it up into the cloud. So additional sensor data. So if we go down here on the on your guys's website and yep. we go to this page, the uh, is this is the dashboard that we built that runs in AWS IoT. Yep. And um, so this is happening real time. So what you're seeing here is if we were riding the motorcycle, you would see the, the speed, the RPM, the engine temperature in real time. So every five seconds, we make a JSON uh, bucket that, uh, or package that we're sending up. Uh, and you're able to view this real time with the GPS data. Assuming we have uh, some sort of probably cellular connection yeah. on the bike, which yep. is, we're gonna get into that in, in a future episode. Yeah. So since there's no information here, does that mean is the bike have, has crashed? Is it now? <laughs> That's the question we're getting. I <laughs> no, it's just in my, in, my, uh, in my garage in San Francisco. Nice. So, I mean, to, to show you the video that you guys saw before, this literally is a rideable motorcycle. The, the shots you're seeing here is us machining the parts, and this is up in Sonoma. So we're literally riding this, uh, this bike around, and you can, you can download it yourself. So the, the files. The, the files. You can download the files. You would then buy a bike from like a crashed you know, uh, yard or junkyard around you, and any Ducati engine from the last 20 years, literally from 97, will fit on here. That's really cool. Yeah, That's awesome. so we, we think it's pretty rad. Uh, cool, all right, so um, let's cut to, uh, so D Dave, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, some of us have heard of this, this, this term, uh, you know, uh, advanced manufacturing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what is what's what's kind of happening? I yeah. mean, give us give us a preview of yeah. the next few years of yeah. what what you think this is going to mean for for makers and, and people that want to make products. Something we see a lot of, especially over the last you know ten years, is that the tools required to build software have really come down. I mean, we just showed that you could operate a robotic arm with a couple lines of code. If you think about the parallels though in the physical space of building things it's still pretty difficult. You know, I have an idea, but how do I go out there? How do I actually go build that thing? Um, so for us, really where we see the space going is for physical objects, we have to lower the barrier to how that's done. 3D printing is a, a great example of that. Um, traditional manufacturing like CNC to make metals, another great example. So I think really in the next, you know, two to five years, we're gonna see costs come down. We're gonna see access to be able to use these tools come down. And to give you an idea, the way that our platform works with Fictiv is we actually don't own any machines. We use a distributed network to build all of these parts. So we're very similar to an AWS where when you order a part, I know that this machine in this location near to you is open and available. And we beam the files to that machine, it gets made and delivered to you. Wow. And that's how we're able to do it in 20 well, we hours. We just say uh, this machine, yeah, anywhere in the country, yeah, that's really cool. So, so when you think about this distributed manufacturing approach and the fact that now you're going to start accessing machines which are idle, and you can actually make 3D printed parts, end use parts on idle machines across the country, how does that change how things so actually for, get done? So, for for us to yeah. you know make a project in our next you know season of episodes yeah. we could literally use fictive.com yeah. pick a variety of different materials metal plastic Plastics. rubber yep. like materials yep. combinations of yep. those yep. upload those files get those back in a day or some number of days yeah. and then and then assemble our, our product put yeah. in our, our electronics yeah. Um, add AWS IoT and yeah. we're, we're, we've got something built. Is that so, kind of what you're saying? So Yeah, and so it's the idea that these things that used to take weeks and months and years to develop, yeah. now we're taking days and hours to develop. To give you an idea of this motorcycle which we showed, yeah. the idea was September, we were sitting here a little <laughs> crazy, and reInvent was December 2nd, 3rd. Yeah. Yeah. In 12 weeks, 
we developed a motorcycle from an idea, literally a crazy idea over some beers to a rideable motorcycle. <laughs> I think we were in this room. I, I think so. <laughs> and, and so it's this idea that we did that because we shortened the cycles to be able to get these back. We had an idea, we made a CAD model, how this will fit, and literally the next day it's, it's on our desk. Um, and so we, we have a couple of props here to kind of yeah, show you. Yeah, can I help here? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of lift this guy up. Oh, but this yeah. year, <laughs> this year what you're seeing, this yeah. is the very, this is the second prototype. We built three of these for the frame of the motorcycle. So all of these are 3D printed. These are the bolts that you're seeing. And these are tubes that we hand bent. And then eventually the next thing we did was we cut this guy here, which is made, starts with a 90 pound block of aluminum that you're cutting with a drill bit, what we call an end mill, to produce this end use part. And then the next step after that was to mount this onto the Ducati engine, put the wheels on, get the IoT going, and we're off yeah. to the races. So one of the so I, I had a somebody ask me at, at reInvent last year oh. when we when we showed this bike and they're like, well why would you, you know, what who would care? Why would you download these these you know frame files and other things, and I said, well, if you look at Dave, you're how tall? Six five. Six five. I'm five six. So there's a little bit. <laughs> Might of be a little bit of a, a difference. Bit of a difference. Bit of a yeah. But literally, I could adjust the the design that basically lower the bike down a little bit, fit my frame a yeah. little bit, and have basically a custom sized motorcycle for me. Yeah. And so instead of having this mass production single size try to fit everybody, which doesn't fit anybody <laughs> type situation, yeah. then you can have a bike that's, that's fits perfect for you. For you. I can have a bike you. that fits for your me. Your wife could have a bike, yeah. your kid could have a bike. So so why why wouldn't you want to do it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just yeah. it's really cool. I think that it's the, the, the world that I live in at least is one where rather than having to consume mass made products, which are generalized, you can start consuming specific things that are for your needs. Apply this to to sunglasses. Apply this to jackets that you wear. Apply this to footwear that you have. Um, there's an awesome company called Carbon 3D. They're the next like 3D printer that's coming out in the waves. They just signed a contract with Adidas to make a a hundred thousand shoes in 2018 <laughs> that are custom made and 3D printed. Wow. How cool that's is really that? Cool. Yeah. That's so really when you think stuff. about that world, you know, and we think about what's going to happen in literally a couple of years time, this is this isn't like futuristic. You know, we're going to go watch a, a Spielberg movie about it. This is happening <laughs> now. We're gonna, yeah, awesome. So stay tuned stay for tuned. Uh, for projects that we're going to do through the rest of 2017, yep. making use of. Yeah. Uh, fictive. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, and I'll give a I'll give a shout out as well. You can you can uh, buy this book for uh, online if you like. It's twenty bucks. But we're also doing a giveaway as well. Uh, so folks that want to see teardowns, want to see really how was an Apple Watch made, uh, you can you can check that out with a link we'll drop into the chat. Awesome. Cool. Well, let's let's wrap up. Let's yeah. go back to Anna Palm's code yeah. and show how we would we would actually take some of this telemetry data off of something like a motorcycle and, and push that into the AWS cloud. Yeah, and for folks that uh, can't see Anupam here, he's uh, he's in Canada, but his, his presence is through the Alexa. Alexa, for those who have Alexas right now, uh, on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's, let's get his code on. Okay, yeah. awesome. So, so let's resume here. Uh, I think last time we were talking about uh, how do we get the data from the frames which are coming. Uh, there was one step which I missed earlier, which was uh, the data which we have was referred to a hand rather than the frame, because first we have to grab a hand, and um, for a given hand, we are finding its direction, its palm position pitch. So I, I fixed this piece uh, while Dave was talking. <laughs> I also created an object uh, which is showing all the values, and I logged it. So, so I can, I'll quickly show you how it looks when I run it. Um, I'm here now, for distractions whenever you need on a palm, so uh, <laughs> just pull, pull me in on the next yeah. one. <laughs> so, so you can see as, a, as a my hand is moving up and down, the y-axis is changing a lot. Now I'll turn left and right. You can see the x is going from a big positive numbers to uh, negative numbers. And z is when I move my hand uh, forward and backward. You can see z-axis going from negative numbers to the positive numbers. And hand position is whether my hand is closed or not. So I closed it, I opened it, closed, open. So, so it's telling how close and how open it is if I keep somewhere in between. It's telling me how, how close and how open it is. So it's, it's working as we expect. Uh, I think it's in a pretty good shape. Let me quickly show you how to send this data into cloud. Now, it's, it, as you can see, it's uh, probably less than 20 lines of code. 
and uh, we we already have the data from Leap Motion. Now, now, how do we send it to cloud? It's very, very simple. Uh, the the SDK which we are going to use for that case is called AWS IoT SDK. So I'll just uh, search for that IoT SDK. Uh, in this case, we are working on JavaScript. Uh, so SDK and uh, Node.js. Let's call Node.js. So there's another GitHub repository where this code is open sourced. We'll just navigate to that quickly. And uh, again, there's a simple example which we'll start with. First, we have to do npm install AWS IoT device SDK. So let's do that. I'll copy paste this. Go to my console. I pasted that. Uh, so it's it's currently downloading the IoT device SDK. It's fetching some data. While while it's fetching, let's look at uh, a quick example. Uh, what we will do is uh, uh, we. This is a simple example. It says first we need to create an object called AWS IoT where we require it, which means uh, we have a reference to this library. Once we have the reference, we have to set up some parameters like key path, third path, uh, CA path. We, we talked uh, in very good detail on these topics on last episode. Uh, and then the last one is device.publish. So device.publish means now that we have a device, let's publish on this device. So I'm going to do all this uh, real quick. Um, well, let's see whether our things are installed. So our, uh, our software is installed. Uh, we already have AWS device SDK here. Um, let's let's quickly go go to our program, which is in Atom again. I'll go here. I'll import one more thing called AWS IoT. Once we have AWS IoT, we can create a device based on what AWS IoT has to offer. So I'll create a device here. Uh, we are calling it device, and there are a lot of things we need to fill in. And the last piece is we want to publish. So we'll say device dot publish what data we need to publish. So let's publish it. Uh, to do that, I'll, I'll say once we have the object, let's, let's publish this object. So we'll say device.publish. Uh, we can give any name for the topic, so let's not worry about that piece. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this later. But we are publishing this data, the data which we have. So json.stringify, instead of putting this json object, we'll put our own object. So we just created an object called json object. Let's put that. So, so this should work as soon as we fill the values here. So how should we fill the values? Let's let's quickly go to AWS console and find uh, where are these values. So I'll go to connect, which means I'm configuring a new device. I'll say configure a new device. Uh, it is asking me which uh, operating system I have and which uh, language I'm using. I go to next. It asks me to give a name to the device. I'll call it, let's say, let's call it MS3 uh, for simplicity. Uh, next step. And uh, it says, uh, hey, download. We, we have a bunch of things for you. Why don't you download it? So I downloaded it. And the next step is to test this piece. So, so uh, as you can see, uh, there's a, it has been downloaded here. It's called connection package.zip. Uh, let, uh, let me do this. Uh, I'll rename it to, let's say, C-O-N-N for now. Uh, I want to go to my terminal and copy it in this current directory. So I'll say CP uh, downloads. C O N dot zip. I'll download it here. I'll unzip those files. I unzipped it, so I have a bunch of files here. Uh, now, now the, the the good thing is it comes with a library which lets you check whether it's working. So I'll 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 give an execute permission to this file. Start dot sh. Uh, this is something we have covered already, so I'm going real fast on this. Uh, start dot sh. I just run it. Oh, sorry, I missed a X there. I'm giving an execute permission, and then I'm running this uh, dot slash start dot sh. Uh, it's running, uh, so it, it's connected already. So it's connected to AWS Cloud. Uh, as you can see, if I say send a hello here, hello ms3, let's let's write that send message. If I say that, uh, I see that message here. So so the connections are working. I'll kill this process. Uh, the next thing we want to do is the, the sample which uh, AWS has provided works. Now we need to make our program work. So let's do a quick uh, long listing here. Or let us, uh, let's LCR maybe, or LS, let's, let's do simple LS. Um, so there are a bunch of placeholders. I'll fill those placeholders quickly. Uh, okay, uh, this is the program. And these are the files which we have here. Okay, let's. So that's okay. 
And feel free to ask questions because uh, I'm going fast because we uh, want to finish this in time. Uh, so key path, what is the key? So uh, we have a uh, few things here, certification, certificate path, CA path. So CA, let's, let's start uh, whatever we can find. So root CA is the certificate authority. I'll put it here. Uh, cert is the public cert, so public key. And while Anupam's doing that, so if folks want to have a good overview of how uh, public key cryptography works and how AWS IoT secures the device uh, communication uh, between itself and the AWS cloud and back again, we go through that in great detail in episode two. So just you can binge watch episode two and, and we do a, a very low tech demo of public key cryptography. Yep, so I've filled in some uh, values here. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens now. Uh, let's give it a try. Uh, I'll run the pro same program again. So it gave me an error. I cannot use a dot slash uh, MS3. So, so I think I need to just uh, give the file here. Okay, let's see whether this fixes it. it if it fixes for this one, uh, yep, it's going for line number pub.js line five. Uh, okay, what is the key path? Unexpected to token dot, okay. I think we can just directly give the file names. Let's see how if that works. Okay, and uh, let's try it again. Okay, MS3 is not defined. I think so, I need to wrap these. I, I, let's see how it works. Okay. Okay, let's, let's give it a try now. Okay, so there's another error here. Um, no, just line number, what is what is the error? So it's saying uh, pub.js line 21, which is line 21 here, okay. Uh, it's saying, oh, it's calling something. So it's calling MQTT library, let's see what happens. So it tried to set the certificate and uh, I think uh, that that thing failed. So it says uh, uh, the certificate which we have provided is not valid. So I think uh, I'm not putting the right syntax here. So let's confirm the syntax. Let me quickly go here. I'll check uh, what what does it look like. Uh, so we have a key path, uh, your private key path, and let's let's confirm whether we are doing right. Uh, we have private key path. Is it's not a path right now. So I think it should be dot slash. But uh, let let's see whether this one would work. Okay, uh, so this is my private key path. Third path is my certificate part, and root CA is root CA. So I think maybe I'm not putting my certificate properly. Uh, let's see uh, if this is happening. Yep, so I think I'm not putting the certificate. Uh, let's see, uh, I'll go back to this thing. My certificate is called cert.pem. I think I used the wrong name there, let's see. Okay, and let's give it a try now. Nothing like coding live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I think uh, I think I was giving the wrong file name. So hopefully this should be working. Now let's let's connect, let's confirm and see uh, in AWS console what's happening. So if I go go to the AWS IoT console again, uh, you can see see this is a bunch of data coming here. So this is this is one way of looking at it. Like as I move my hands, this data is coming. But uh, there's another way. So I, I'll I'll quickly show you because this is just a setup. But if you go to, there's something called test client. And this test client allows you to uh, connect to a topic. And uh, uh, we'll go deeper into topic in the next episode. But when you say pound, it means you can, you are, you're using a wildcard. You can connect to any topic. And when I do that, it, it will tell me topic underscore two is getting all these messages as I'm moving my hands. So, so the, the data from my laptop is going into AWS Cloud Live. And uh, it's going to topic number two. and uh, uh, it's topic number two because uh, in our program uh, we have chosen topic Whoa. number two here. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then we have topic number two here. So, 
Um, I think this is a very simple program. Uh, for those who could not follow and have questions on this, we'll definitely have this uh, code on uh, on the shared links as well. And uh, uh, if there are any questions, we can probably take one or two questions and then wrap up this episode. Yeah. So while Trevor is checking to see if any there are any questions, so Anupam, let's so let's talk about what we're going to cover kind of next episode, and let's uh, thank. Uh, Dave Evans from Fictive yeah. to, for coming on on the show Thanks today. For having me, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we'll we'll bring you back uh, uh, good. when we uh, build our. I'll bring our the motorcycle next Season time, two so. episode. There you go. <laughs> how I uh, just uh, curious though. Uh, yeah. So when you say you can pretty much do anything in 3D printing, so let's say motorcycle, and they want to add on a a sidecar. Yeah. That would be pretty much easy to do. I think that you can design it. Whenever you're manufacturing, there's a million ways to skin a cat. So could you do it with 3D printing? Yes. Would it be the cheapest, most optimal? Probably not. But it'd be the coolest. One. It would be the coolest. <laughs> I mean, if you're going for cool factor with uh, someone else's budget, then yeah, definitely. Yeah. Interesting. I'll get a sidecar for you, Todd. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't get my own bike. <laughs> What's up with that? Awesome. So Anupam, so what are we gonna what are we gonna cover um, on the next um, episode of Maker Studio? Yeah. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the next step. So now that we have the data in cloud, how do we use it? What are the different things we can do with it? Uh, we'll talk about what. Why are we sending it to AWS IoT? Like uh, now that we know how to send it. What was the need for it, right? What are the different things which uh, AWS IoT allows us, uh, which uh, which for which we are doing all this exercise? So we go, we're going to go deeper into AWS IoT and what are the things it offers us? Yeah. So managing devices, processing data, and then we're going to uh, then move on to uh, subscribing to the data and then using it on the robot arm. Very so, cool. is there any questions before we wrap? No, uh, I, I think we're good. And I guess uh, for the final note, for the book wise, yeah, make uh, sure to check it out. Yeah, is there? So, did you write this book? Yeah. So, published by our content team, uh, we have a bunch of mechanical engineers that tear these things down every day, uh, or every Friday, I should say. And this is kind of the the best of uh, the best of the series. So, make sure. To check it out. Always cool to publish your first book. So, is it on Amazon? Uh, it's on, it is on Amazon. Oh, right. it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it even has an ISBN number, so uh, you know we're we're we're, we're official then. Nice. You awesome. can uh, you get your 3D printed parts faster than you can get the book, you know, because we'll do it 24 hours. But oh, you can still do wow. second day prime on this. Uh, awesome. You can download it. Awesome. Okay. Well, anyway, so uh, from from me, Todd Barlin, Trevor uh, Hikes, yeah. And, and Dave, Dave Evans, signing and, off. Thanks so and much. And Palm, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Yep. See you. Uh, see you next week.